Now the next case was to be done by somebody. He backed out. That was two weeks ago. Then we circulated a mail. Anybody who's interested in doing it, so we got it uh, from RML. Dr. Sukriti will present oral cavity cancer, buccal buccal mucosa. Have you marked? Good morning, everyone. I'm going to present the case of buccal carcinoma. 45 years old gentleman who is married, resident of Agra, presented to the surgical OPD with chief complaint of painless ulcer in the oral cavity since two and a half months. He was apparently well two and a half months back when he noticed a small ulcer on the right side of his cheek, which was insidious in onset, rapidly progressive in size. It was initially two into two centimeters and it was now seven into six centimeters in size. It was initially present over the right buccal mucosa and later extended beyond the oral cavity to involve the upper and the lower lip. Initially, the, swell, the ulcer was painful. Uh, later, it became painless. It was associated with history of loosening of teeth over two months. There was no history of uh, bleeding or pus discharge, no history of constitutional symptoms, no history of any difficulty in chewing, swallowing, or speech, no history of loss of appetite or significant weight loss. There was no history of exposure to radiations, to head and neck, no history of trauma or dental intervention done in the past, no history of high-risk behavior, no history suggestive of distant metastasis, no history of any ear, nose, throat-related complaints. He is non-diabetic, non-hypertensive. There is no history of tuberculosis in the past, no history of any chronic medical illness or surgery done in the past, no history of drug allergy. Personal history, he is non-vegetarian with normal bowel and bladder habits, normal sleep pattern, he chewed tobacco for six years and left six months back. He did not keep it in the mouth. He smoked BD 20 pack years and left smoking two months back. There is history of occasional intake of alcohol. There is no history of head and neck related malignancy in the first degree relatives. That is the history. Mr. Piyush, any question? She mentioned. What radiation? High dose, low dose? It's the low dose 20 grays radiation, specially given at a young age, 20 years. Oh, 20. Less than 20, less not than 20. 20. Less than 20. Why? why? Why not high dose? High dose are ablative and oh, low dose they're are they're mutational. Okay. okay, what are the history of cystic or distant metastasis, did you ask? Uh, sir, history of uh, distant metastasis to lung uh, in the form of hemoptysis or uh, 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 metastasis to uh, bones in the form of bone pains. Then I took the history of any severe headache or uh, seizure episode or history of any jaundice uh, for metastasis to liver. Is it common with uh, uh, buccal mucosa or oral cavity cancers to have distant metastasis? Oral cavity cancers, uh, uh, it is less common with them to uh, metastasize. Also the weight loss. I mean, is it common to have cachexia with oral no. cancers? Why is it not so common? It usually occurs in... Uh, in a high volume uh, growth uh, where there is more of the central necrosis, uh, producing more of a tumor necrosis factor, that is cachectin, which leads to cachexia. But in oral cavity cancer, there is not much of uh, central necrosis. Uh, did you look for halitosis <coughs> in this patient? Yes, ma'am. You made a mention? I may have missed in it out. In the examination. Okay, now you tell me that um, uh, what are the respiratory symptoms that you may have asked for in this patient and why? Um, there could be history of uh, dyspnea uh, if there is a metastasis to uh, lungs, uh, which is less common with oral malignancy. But no, something uh, to do with the, with the passage itself somewhere. What can be the history? If there is a cancer in the oral cavity, there would be, uh, the saliva wouldn't be... No, no, uh, uh, let me complete the question. If there is a malignancy in the oral cavity, could it be happening anywhere down also in the same epithelium? And that's field, ca uh, field, field cancerization. cancerization. So, so can I have a history of respiration related to that also? No? If there is a sec uh, second, uh, uh, if there is a growth uh, in, in the lower down the passage okay, also. Okay, and anything else, if there is, an, there is a person who's got uh, secretions collecting all the time, what can be the, what can be the problem? He's not able to, you know, uh, there is excessive salivation. Important reason for. Mm. And in the, you mentioned that position. tobacco, yes, tobacco chewing was a factor, right? Which you mentioned that he did not keep in the mouth. You're talking about he was not keeping quid. No. Am I right? Yes, sir. So what is its significance? How does tobacco relate to this? 
The tobacco contains nicotine, uh, which gets converted uh, by the bacteria, which is present in the oral cavity, into nitrosamines, which, which is carcinogenic. But it requires a contact period, uh, contact time. But in this patient, since he did not used to keep it uh, in the mouth for a long time, the contact time was... Uh, no, it may be less, less, but the risk but is still there. there. It was there. Any... What is the importance of looking for loosening of teeth? Yes. You took that history. That's why we can ask. There could be involvement of the socket, uh, mandible, which can result in loosening of teeth and loss of teeth. Clarify better. You mean to say only direct involvement of uh, infiltration will result? Is there any other way? There will be loss of multiple teeth, one after the other, without pain. So through the mandibular foramina, they can be infiltrated. They can infiltrate with it, like you said. But it's, uh, okay. which nerve goes through the mandible? Inferior alveolar. Yes, so that gets involved. It is taken as mandibular involvement. Suppose you find this nerve is involved, it's taken as mandibular involvement only because it is going through the mandible. There will be associated history of loss of sensation. Yes, so. I was just going to ask that. Where? In the lower. Uh, so that history is important. The and uh, the high risk behavior history, what does it mean? Um, the patient could be having uh, multiple sexual partners and which can result uh, into exposure to uh, HPV virus. Any other, that's one. Or uh, syphilis. Uh, no, that's, that's high risk behavior, one, two, anything else? IV drug abuse. IV drug abuse. So the history needs to be taken carefully in this. Any role of alcohol with them? He was uh, taking uh, alcohol occasionally. What is the connection? How does alcohol contribute to cancer? It does yeah. not directly cause, is not directly uh, a carcinogen, but it can potentiate the effect of uh, tobacco by re reducing the protective mechanism of the mucosa oh, yes. lining the. You don't have the cavity. defense left, that's what it is. Let's move to the examination now. The general physical yeah, one, examination. Sorry, sorry. The family history, you took a family history of, no history of uh, head and neck, head and neck malignancy in first degree relatives. Why is that important? So, uh, oral cancer uh, can uh, run in family. And can you name the gene now? They, they are finding that there is a connection. No, sir. Okay, let's move. I examined the patient in the sitting position under the broad daylight after taking an informed consent. He was conscious, alert, cooperative, and well-oriented to time, place, and person. The performance status was 90 by Karnofsky. He was nutritionally well-preserved on account of BMI of 22.1 kg per meter square and mid-arm circumference of 17 centimeters. He was well hydrated with pulse of 88 per minute in the right radial artery, which was regular in rhythm, normal volume and character. His blood pressure was 126 by 72 in the left arm supine position and respiratory rate was 14 breaths per minute, regular thoracoabdominal. There was no cyanosis, pallor, ictrus, uh, clubbing, or pedal edema. There was cervical lymphadenopathy present, which, will, which I'll mention in the uh, neck examination. There was no generalized lymphadenopathy. Cardiovascular and respiratory system was normal. Examination of other system was normal. Um, on inspection... Can um, you show the picture again? Let's finish. On inspection, the facial symmetry was distorted. The right nasolabial fold was pushed uh, uh, a little behind. The right lower lip was deviated downwards. There was a visible ulcerative proliferative growth over the right angle of mouth, which was extending 2.5 centimeters to both the upper and the lower lip, and it was around 5 into 4 centimeters. There was a visible bulge in the neck, which was around 3 to 3 centimeters in the right submandibular region. Mouth opening was adequate. Orodental hygiene was poor on account of halitosis and uh, tobacco stains. There were uh, melanoplachic and leukoplachic patches present over the right and the left buccal mucosa, hard and the soft palate, and also over the gums. All teeth were missing except the right third molar in the lower jaw. The growth was continuing onto the right buccal mucosa. It was 6 into 4 centimeters in size with irregular margins, rolled out edges, slough and necrotic material on the floor. And on palpation, the growth was non-tender. Base was indurated, which was extending beyond the margins of the lesion, and it did not bleed on touch. The retromolar trigon and the bilateral upper and lower uh, uh, ginger buccal sulci were free of tumor. The skin overlying the ulcer was normal. There was no local rise of temperature. There was no erythema, sinus, scar or fistula. Tongue protrusion was normal. Parotid duct opening was uh, visualized at the normal site. Submandular glands uh, opening was also visualized on the floor of the mouth. Examination of 7th, 
9th, 10th, 11th and 12th cranial nerves was normal. Then on examination of the neck, the trachea appeared central. There was a visible bulge of 3 to 3 cm in the right submandibular region. 2 into 2 cm subcutaneous swelling of, uh, was present, 3 cm right to the midline and 5 cm uh, above the clavicle with punctum which was present since childhood. Uh, there was cervical lymphadenopathy present. 2 into 2 cm single heart fixed lymph node at level 1A on the right side. 2.5 into 2 cm single heart fixed lymph node was f uh, felt at level 1B on the right side. Another lymph node of around 1 into 1 cm uh, firm in consistency, it was mobile, present at level 2. 2 into 2 cm lymph node was found at level 3. And another 2 into 1 cm fixed heart lymph node was found at level 4 on the right side. Carotid pulsations were felt at the normal position on both the sides. Examination of cervical spine was normal. Examination of ear, throat, nose and scalp was normal.